Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We have a emergency podcast. Alert the masses. We had to. Um, Mike Hazen, dear Lord, what this man just did is insane. He got Jordan Montgomery, and as everyone can see here, Brett is incredibly hyped right now. Um, like, it is absolutely insane. Like, yeah, I, like, I'm feeling the, like that's how it was when I saw the, the uh, passing tweet. Jordan Montgomery, um, one year, $25 million. It can be two years. The second year is a vested option if he makes 10 starts. Um, I think that's going to happen. Now, he's not going to start – Open, he's not going to start on the roster opening day. Makes sense. He signs two days before. He probably hasn't pitched all postseason. Uh, I mean, all – yes, yeah, since the World Series probably. Um, I'm hoping he stayed in shape. Um, they did say he's probably going to make like two or three uh, starts in – I don't know if it was Reno or just in the minor leagues. Um, so very excited. Um, all Like chips are in the center of the table. Like, it is literally what it is right now. Chips are in the center of the table. I'm going to start with Gabe. Gabe, your thoughts on Mike Hazen signing Jordan Montgomery? Yeah, I'm really excited for this. Like, I truly wasn't expecting it, especially because this whole time they've been talking about, um, you know, or we've been talking about it too, the Ryan Nelson versus Tommy Henry. Uh, we truly thought that all the moves were done. It's like, yeah, the roster that we had, we were ready. We were, like, super confident with what we had and now at adding montgomery who was what another number two we have three number two guys we have the best rotation in baseball like screw the mariners whoever tradition in the league and i mean that we the other people have just pods that um there's a hundred like point one of these guys on it. We saw. Oh, am I trying? Sorry. Yeah, I wasn't sure if that was me, so that's why I asked in our yes, private chat. I want to make sure. Yes, I gave you chopping up a little bit there. Okay. Um. But I just want to say, like, I'm really excited. It's the first team. He seems to be a really good guy as well. So, yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. Um, Brett, the floor is yours. Well, I mean, I guess my 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 two stepping to some Kublai Khan uh, at the beginning of the show could probably speak for me, but I'm I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. I was one not expecting Jordan Montgomery in the offseason in general. Once we got Erod, I was like, cool, that's our starting pitcher. We're fine. Even once Erod got injured, I was like dreaming i was like oh yeah we'll get j-rod after the giants got you know snow we'll mike hazen will swing his dick back at the rest of the nos and won't you know show out that was like kind of like some cope again i didn't expect it but man jordan montgomery is an arizona dimeback jordan montgomery again just let me read some numbers for you here he's been in the league since 2017 i'm gonna read off his era every year 388 362 1,027 innings, 6.75 in four innings, 5.11 in 44. Everything after that is full, like, season's worth minus uh, – actually, you know, everything is full season's worth. So, 157 innings, 3.83 ERA. 178 innings, 3.48 ERA. 114 ERA – or 114 innings with the Yankees, 3.6 ERA. And then the same year, he put up 63 innings with the Cardinals for a 311 ERA. Last year, between the Rangers and the Cardinals, he put up a 3.2 or 3.2 ERA in 188 innings. This man is an entire career, is an innings eater, and he does not have an ERA over four. This is one of the best signings the Dimex have had for the rotation. And again, it is a one year with the vesting deal, he needs to make 10 starts to reach that second year to get paid $25 million next year as well, which I think he will because, again, unless it's a Bronson Royo kind of-esque Dimebacks curse, I don't think he will hopefully be injured. But Jordan Montgomery is an innings eater. 
We've seen what he did in the playoffs last year, and he's consistent. Which the fact that we can say for every single game when the Diamondbacks rotation is healthy, we have a consistent starting pitcher every day where you can go in there hoping, not just hoping like, oh, maybe we'll get something good, expecting, hey, give me five solid innings minimum. That's what we're hoping for every day. I don't think we've had that in like uh, uh, in like in my lifetime. Again, I was too young for the 01, you know, rotation in the stretch. I don't think we had this kind of like, you know, confidence in our rotation ever. I, th- I think the last time was 2018 when we had, um, you know, Prime Robbie Ray, Prime Patrick Corbin, Granky, and Taiwan. I think they were all around like what we have now. But yeah, this is a totally different thing. This is a team that I don't, I think is probably even better than the 2001 team in a lot of ways. Um, and also, I want to piggyback off you, Brett. You're talking about Montgomery. So when he moved to the Rangers, he had a 3.7 ERA with the with the um, shoot, who the hell was he with? The Cardinals. So the yeah, Cardinals yeah. last year suffered a lot from bad defense. So if you look at his numbers, his FIP was significantly higher with them than it was with the Rangers, who had a really good defense. And someone like Montgomery, you know, he plays a lot of you know pop ups and ground balls. And so you see just how he, how drastically it changes. He goes from 3.7 uh, ERA to suddenly going down to 2.79 ERA with the Rangers in 11 games. You know, And it's not super small sample size, 67 innings. And he had a 3.27 FIP and a 1.09 whip. And I think with the team like the Diamondbacks, who have such a good defense, I think he's going to fit here like perfectly. He is going to lower his ERA. He's probably going to put up career numbers here. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm really excited to see him. Also, two point nine ERA in the World Series. Unfortunately, what do you mean? What team? What team did he? What team? What team did they play in the uh, World Series? I forgot. Pain after after like October 29th, I just had a blur. The Texas okay. Rangers. Sorry, uh, Josh does bring up a solid comment. Does he wear his ring? On the well, he doesn't so, have it yet. So they he haven't have it yet. But if he, when he does get it. Here's where, like, I, I could see as a teammate, you bring it in and you go, like, not as, like, a, a, a flex or, like, you know, you're trying to be, like, oh, you know, bragging. You go, all right, boys. This is yeah, like, this is what we're like, going to get this yeah. year in, with the Diamondbacks logo. Like, this is, like, that's, like, the scene in Major League where they have, like, the owner with all, like, the, the peel away stickers every time they win a game and it reveals more as they go. It's like that. But every te- every single time they win an extra game, Throughout the play, like once you get to the playoffs, obviously, once you get there, every single time you add on, just adding on another piece of that ring, getting another. So we play the Dimex go to the Rangers at the end of May, so that's probably when he gets his ring. Um, there it, it's a quick two game, uh, quick middle of the week, two game series. So um, that's most likely when because mo- most of the players they uh, they get it most likely the first home series of the year, um, but mm-hmm. since he's not going to be there. Um, but one thing we got to talk about, the 40-man right now is full. They have to make a corresponding move to clear space to add him to the 40-man. And I think we're all in agreement what we would love to see is they designate for assignment Emmanuel Rivera. Again, I have nothing against him as a person. I just think he is he's not major league consistent at bass worthy. And with this signing, this this says to me we plan on being back there. You don't yeah, spend twenty five million dollars on a starting pitcher two days before the season unless this the Seawald um injury is the one to two months that some people think it might be, or even the Rodriguez injury is worse than they thought. So they might yeah. be a, out with him for a bit. So they're like, okay, so we need to replace a starting pitcher. There's only one guy on the market. Um, Yeah. So we'll see. Um, 
Maybe the maybe only move in foil hat, really quick. Maybe <laughs> again, we don't know exactly. We we know our in house fixes for closer. It's our best option is probably Ginkle. And yeah. again, I will admit, I I have confidence in Ginkle. I think he can get the job done. I think he is going to like he would get the job done as a good, a good closer. But we saw last year like the addition of Seawall, just who Seawall was in the clubhouse and the bullpen, who he was in the mound, led to the rest of the bullpen like falling in place. Mm-hmm. Where we don't know what we're gonna see with like the bullpen having to shift up. I, I'd say shift up a position. You know, everyone like takes a step up. It could be the exact same bullpen we had, and again, it's not all year. Hopefully, hopefully Seawall's back after like maybe a month at most. At most, most, most. Uh, hopefully he's back, and you know we're good. But maybe instead of having to call up Jmar and have you know him or Frias or one of those other young yeah. arms have to step up more in the bullpen, they go, hey, you know what? You want to know who can eat more innings for us? That's not a bullpen arm. That's not Ryan Nelson or Tommy Henry. Like, not like they can't get it done. Jordan Montgomery, he's out there. If we saw, like, especially after we saw Snell getting $33 million a year with an opt-out after this year, Jordan Montgomery with a, I'm going to say it, a much better track record than Blake Snell in his career. I think they've been around nearly the same amount of time, too. He's I only think 30 Jordan, days older than him. Yeah, he's like, like, I'm like, I think we got the better deal in the long run. Like, yeah, Blake Snell might have nastier stuff, but Jordan Montgomery is more consistent. Jordan Montgomery is not a five inning merchant. Jordan Montgomery is a World Series winner. <laughs> Jordan Montgomery is not going to get pulled in the fifth oh inning Lord. in the World Series against, you know, a, another team. Like, he's got that. Like, and again, that's that's not Blake Snell's fault. That That's me, you know, throwing low blows. But again, <laughs> saying they're oh they're not actually hurt. I mean, hey, not gonna lie. Again, that's where I wasn't really too worried about. Like, again, I'm worried about Erod, but the fact that he immediately was like, "I'm like 95 percent." Like, where I'm like, okay, I know players can say what they want to say. It's like I, September or yeah, like, the playoffs. He'd be pitching, but yeah, it's be, it's April. Like. Yeah, exactly. That's where I'm like, I'm not worried. Where if, if that was the move that made them go, and again, I want to bring in a con, you know, the new payroll at 175 million, which is 60, something million, 30 something million, 60 million, million from bum. last year at yeah, the start of last year to Mad Bum or something like that. So, like, 175 million is not even for the on field payroll. That's still wild to me that they made all yeah. these off season moves and then still went and got Jmont. Like, so I know I, I don't want to you know continue going on the speaking rant, but like I talked to you guys before, perfect time. I'm gonna go on a quick rant. Dimebacks fans, we need wait that that wasn't your rant. No, this is my rant now. Dimebacks fans, we need to show out this year. We have been begging for years, years for this team to extend players. They extended Corbin Carroll. There's a good chance they like. It could probably extend Zach Gallon. Maybe a financials work out. We have been begging for this team to spend money, keep people here, invest in this goddamn fucking team, and they're doing it. What do we need to do? We need to show the fuck out. We need to not let the Dodgers punk us in our own home. We need not to let the, the, the Padres punk us in our own home like they did in the first opening series. Like, we need to prove this is not just a playoff hype. You know, like this fans, like there's a lot of fair weather fans here. I'm gonna I'm gonna say it right now. That's how Arizona sports is. There's a lot of transplant fans here, transplant fans here that are fair weather. I'm gonna say it. We need to show the fuck out for this team this year. Show up for this team. Don't be afraid of oh Dodger, fuck that. Fuck Dodger fans. If they want to come into our house and act like this is their stadium, you know. no. You don't need to be physical, you don't need to get into fights, you can still be the bigger people. But no, don't be afraid. Come to the ballpark. Show this team that their their spending isn't going to be in vain. That we are we have been begging for this. They've finally given us what we've asked. Let's reciprocate that energy the entire year. Okay? I need to see it. I need to see it. I, on the PHNX prod, podcast, they even said it. They're like, hey, they've given me shit for being a loud fan before. I'm even loud right now. But I'm sorry. We need more fans energized at baseball games. This isn't a Suns game. Suns game was boring as shit because you can barely yell other than defense. 
defense. No, fuck that. I'm sorry. That's boring. That's that's for the ADHD riddled youth. I'm sorry. Go to a baseball game. Bring the fucking energy. Let's show this team and this city that we care about this franchise. Thank you. There we go. Yes, let that man cook. Uh, I mean, completely right. Like, we need to show not only the Fairweather fans here, just baseball fans in general who thought us going to the World Series was a fluke. Like, all the predictions, and I'm still seeing, I'm still seeing a lot of people saying, oh, Giants are going to be second. Dunbacks are going to take a step up. I'm like... Did you not follow? Like, we've had it, per, the best offseason, I personally feel. People will say Dodgers because they got Shohei and Yamamoto. Yes, they spent a million dollars. But we improved leaps and bounds. And Ken Kendrick showed something to me today that he is willing to go all in. And I was like, oh, damn. Like, he is willing to spend money. He's, our payroll has increased $60 million since last year. That's literally 50% of the prior. So I don't know who convinced them, if it was Mike Hazen, if it was Tory. I think the who, team is finally out of the financial hole that Colangelo and them left them in to where they're comfortable in spending more money. Yeah, I and, I would not doubt that. Um Kevin, thanks for the uh, support. We appreciate it very, very much. So thanks okay. for um, stopping by. Um, but no, um, I was very surprised by this move. Like, I know there was the discussion, I think it was earlier today and yesterday, that they were talking, and I'm like, wow. Like, Yeah, the, there, there was a report, right, that, that they were like in discussion with him or whatever. I think Jim Biden, I, right? Yeah, so at that point I was like, yeah, I mean, I wanted him, but I was like, yeah, it's probably just one of those Scott Boris things. He's throwing it out there. So, like, the Red Sox or the Yankees up their offer or whatever. But, I mean, just the fact that he chose the D-backs, like, I'm sure the Yankees gave him a similar offer, or maybe they didn't. Like, I'm sure that's why Yankees fans are, you know, trying to, I don't know, do stuff. I was going to say commit a crime, a specific crime, but I'd be put on a watch list right now if I said it. But, um, it's okay. You're not on yeah, Twitter. They're not going to send yeah. the up to you. <laughs> yeah. So, but it's just one of those things where I was like, he must have seen something here on the Harry Light and not just the money. Because, I mean, this was a, another Boris disaster class. He has a golden sombrero of disaster classes right now. Which I'll take this one. MVP. Yeah. Boris, Montgomery was which... looking for $172 million. That was one of the offers that he had $172 million. He, if, if he uh, completes like this deal, he's going to get $50 million for two years. Like He's getting a show-me deal, which is crazy. This is not a guy coming off of Tommy John. This is not a guy who's had a spotty dry record. This is a guy who's been consistent his whole career, and he just got a show-me deal from the Diamondbacks. And, I mean, I'm sure he's excited to be here. I'd love to see him here. Um Man, like I just, I truly was not expecting this, especially with the way Ken Kendrick has been the last 15, 16, 17 years ish. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. that's why I'm like, I've been so critical and I want to be the first ones to be, hey, this, this is, this is one year. Senda. We never, we've seen them spend before and then immediately dial it back. That's where I'm like, win or lose, let's show out, show the team. Hey, we got some hungry fans here. Kendrick, you can spend money. You can do this more. He's we, and that's more money. Like, you can take some money from your car collection. You'll be fine. And and that's what so like and, and where it makes it like you're talking about Boris taking an L. Do you think that this could lead into Oh my god with all the, po all the positive all the positive oh. Dude, yeah, Oscar, I I would I would do dirty things to Scott Boris. If that happened, if we got but basically with, four if, if years to get Zach Allen on some kind of extension on this kind of Boris, you know, esque contract that he's gotten for like Snell and like all them where they're still getting paid, but they're not getting the the typical Boris money. Like, you know what I mean? 
This this seems a little like so no, he had those fever. like he had like four guys. Contract. He had those four guys that were all looking for money. Literally all of them was like two year deals, and it's an opt out after the first. None of them got the long term deals that they were all uh, looking for. Uh, Brodney, thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it very much. Um, like it's like it's crazy to me that. I wonder if this is a sign that all teams are just done with him. Like, they're just like, we are done dealing with your antics. We're not going to cave to you just the way that he negotiates these deals. So if you're Scott Boer's client, this is probably something that's eye-opening for you. Um, like, it's going to – I'm very curious to see what happens, uh, like, the next few seasons with – his clients like this whole thing with gallon like is this going to be something that we can take advantage of where maybe he has his guard down and hazen can get that four year 80 million dollar deal done because if you because if you lock him in like my so on our last episode my expectations was 87 wins i'm bumping that up to 90 to 91 now like, with this signing, like, at full strength, Gallon, Kelly, Montgomery, Erod, mm, fought. Keep going. keep going. Yes, please. Like, the, Brandon fought doesn't have to literally be a starter in the postseason at all with that rotation. I, I saw something on Twitter today that was like Mike Hazen, Ken Kendrick saw Joe Mantiply start a World Series game and they took it personally. And they, they really probably, did. They, they really, really did. And I don't blame Tori for that. He didn't have any no, no other choice. Tori really like that's where I feel like we've said it before. He's earned so many flowers after last year where the roster he's given managed them all the way to the World Series. And and again, we that's why he used the power of friendship. He literally used and, and that power of friendship came from Tori. That's why yes. I'm so happy we didn't fire him. He not so many it, it was uh, on the manager. When when we were struggling in July and August, D back's Twitter was all fire Tori. And I'm like, y'all. He has nothing in his toolbox. He has no toys to play with. He's doing the best that he could. So, Tori, if he can turn this team into a 90-win team this year, manager of the year definitely I, is very possible for him. Yeah, I I don't even think in 90. I'm, I had them in 95 like as it was. I, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. Talking, I can't go that I'm far. I'm talking to 100 now. I am talking about 100 games. I screw okay, whatever the you're Giants. smoking on. I'm going to join you there because yeah. I kind of want to oh, join you. Was that no, 21 no. when the Dodgers and Giants both had 100 wins? Are we going to yeah. see that? I, well, like the last month, they're going back and forth all I love, month. I, I love that's that. Where I was seeing it. That's, what, that's honestly where I was seeing it, but I was, I was going to be closer, like 95, 96. For both the Dodgers and the D-backs, just based on the fact that the Dodgers have no real rotation, and also screw the Giants. I mean, they got Blake Snell, who you know has been inconsistent his whole career. His FIP last year was even higher than it should have been. He had like a what four, four FIP or whatever it was, super high WHIP. Like he's overrated. Like I'm sorry, he's he didn't deserve the 300 million that he was asking for. He didn't deserve the 150 million that the that the Yankees offered him. He Barely deserves a thirty something million. He's getting every he year. He got two years, sixty two. <laughs> yeah, and I think I mean you know he did win the Cy Young, but we're not getting Cy Young and Blake Snell next year. We're gonna get a guy who has a three point eight four and a half ERA. Like mark it down now. Like hopefully you can hopefully. you know everybody can bookmark this and then you know tweet at me later. Um, but look at our rotation the way it is now. I mean. God so, do we want to talk about what Tori said earlier today, where this was our rotation? Yeah. Gallon, Kelly, Henry, Fott, and Nelson looks completely different now. <laughs> yeah, it's just totally it's different. It's crazy. Totally, totally different. I mean, just the fact that we have three guys who can pitch 180 innings. Two of them have pitched 200 innings within the last two seasons. Like, what team has that? 
None. Like, like I was talking oh, about the Dodgers like the, earlier. The elite teams, the Dodgers, the Yankees. Not even. Like the, the Dodgers Yankees don't have, have anybody who has pitched over 150 innings right now. Oh, I guess, yeah. Maybe the, the Astros, I think, the last few years, they've gotten some good innings out of like their big I mean, three. Verlander's hurt. Um, yeah, Brad, I, oh, I think you guys, in terms Actually, of right. proven, I think ours is the best rotation in baseball. Seattle has the potential like the potential out of their rotation could be pretty nasty, yeah. Yeah, but a lot of it's unknown. Like take the Erod injury out of it. Yeah. We have four guys that could probably go 180 in it. I, 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 if Mon- Montgomery will probably missed the first two or three weeks. So that's probably 20, 22 innings. Probably. That's what makes so, me wonder is because I heard on the PHNS podcast the other day that he's apparently – and again, I know it's like side, you know, like his camp, whatever he's warming up versus spring training is different. But apparently he was already ramped up to 75 pitches, which is what so like – I think it's Kelly, two starts. Ryan. I think it's two starts. Um, so I think – yeah. So I, I think he's out the first two weeks, and then I think they uh, bring him back. Um, but no, mm-hmm. I – what they said here uh, today, this will be the starting uh, rotation for the first uh, two series. Like, n- n- nothing's going to change. It's just what's this rotation going to look like in May and June? Um, yeah. We really sh- – like, the bullpen should be rested. Like, it really should. Because with Gallon Kelly, Montgomery, and Rodriguez, depending on how long Rodriguez is out, Gallon's probably going to approach 200. If Kelly doesn't have his cramping issues, he'll probably approach 200. Um, Montgomery will probably get like 170. And again, Erod, depending on how many any, how long it takes, how long he's out, he could also probably be like 160, 170. Yeah, so, like so that's that's, that's right unheard now. of. So I'm looking at the schedule right now. Obviously, you know today's the 26th as we're recording the podcast. Two days from now, the 28th is opening day. Uh, if they're slotting uh, J-Mont in the way it looks like they're slotting him in, at least what I've seen the projections, is Gallon, Kelly, Erod, J-Mont, or J-Mont, Erod, whichever you want to do. Um, they're so, both lefties, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, so for this lefty, but I'm going to say, like, for the, the sake of, like, you know, timing it, you know, on the, the, the larger end, let's say he's in the four hole. So he would miss his... Uh, March 31st, start against the Rockies, you know, four days. And you would miss his uh, April 6th, start against the Braves. And then you would maybe miss the April 12th, start against the Cardinals. I could see him Ooh, back. That would be a nice by, debut, though. I could see him either back in the – the by April 12th against the Cardinals or hopefully, again, barring any injury, you we know how things can go, you know, guys yep. trying to get fully ramped up. But if he is truly ramped up right now to 75 pitches, as some of the things I've heard reported on, like, uh, I think Jesse on the PHNX Dimeback show said, I could see either an April 12th against the Cardinals or a April 17th against the Cubs. Both home games, I may add. One's a matinee at 1240, so I'm hoping it's the Friday 12 or 640 because that just mm, – uh, a, a nice 640. That's perfect for MLB Network to put that on there, but that's that's kind of what I'm eyeing because after that, the after the Cubs start in the 17th, you get in St. Louis on the 22nd, and then possibly in Seattle on the 28th. And I don't think it's going to take him a full month and a half to be ready to pitch because again, the early in the season, he's, he's not Blake Snell. He's not, yeah, Blake, he's not Snell. Blake Snell. And usually early in the season, we've seen especially Tori Lovello knows, hey, this squad isn't just going gas out to make the postseason. There is that standard, not going to say expectation, there's that standard to make the playoffs. They're going to be limited in the beginning of the year anyway. To where Winning J-Mon culture. Throw, they established that last year. Yeah, so like that's where like as long as Jamon's healthy, if he's already at 75, I don't see any reason for him to miss more than two weeks. Completely. Like, like they're like, Especially like, what are you gonna? What are you gonna go strike out a bunch of like double A or like single A and like double A guys, or even super low A guys in the back leagues? Like, that's not gonna fully help you. I feel like get ramped up versus no. hey, here's if you can throw five innings against a major league team, 75, 75 pitches. Our bullpen, it's early in the year; they'll be healthy, like healthy enough to where we can help you ease into this role. I don't think he'll miss much time, thankfully. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, I think, yeah, it's either that Cardinals start or that start um, after it on the 18th. Um, I think that is definitely um, probably how it's going to play out. Um, <laughs> it's so funny. All, all spring training, we're like, that funnel starter, is it Nelson? Is it Henry? And then Eri gets her, well, I guess it's both. Now it's about to be none. Which is a good problem to have. Like, you want to have that uh, pitching depth because you never know who's going to go down. Um, so I, I'm i just, yeah. Like, first we got to wait. What What's the corresponding move so that they can put Montgomery on the 40-man? Um, are they going to designate for Simon uh, Rivera? Or um, we'll have to uh, wait and see. Um so it like I was trying to find out like when's the deadline that they have to officially announce the twenty six? Is it the day of? Is it tomorrow? Like I I couldn't find out. Yeah, I don't know the exact deadline. That's a good question. So I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Um, obviously, bullpen's going to be interesting here to see the first couple weeks because we're. I believe they said Paul Sewald at minimum is one to two weeks. Mm -hmm. Um, they said it could be as long as one to two months. I hope it's not that one. I, I, I really hope it's just, uh, one to two weeks. Um, but like Brett said, Ginkle can, I think can step in, um, and fill the role for a couple of weeks. If it's longer than that, I might get a little worried that they could potentially fall behind pretty because the thing with this Dodger team is they do it every year. Like they'll struggle early and then June they'll go like 26 and four. Like they'll go on some ridiculous tear because, um, right. Like you kind of feel bad for him because Nelson has had a really, really good spring training. And like, he feels like he earned that spot, which he did. But we saw what Jordan Montgomery did last year when he got to Texas. He was just a different pitcher. Like, he was one of the top pitchers in all of Major League Baseball. And if you have a shot to get – I think Erod is out for a lot longer than we think. Um, like, I really – I, because it doesn't make – like, why make this move unless you just, like – Something else happened. Like Erod, like he's out for a month instead of one to two weeks. Like I feel like the Erod injury is worse than we've been made to believe. So, uh, Gabe, any kind of final thoughts on what they you think they might do with Ryan uh, Nelson and uh, what the thoughts are here for Montgomery? Going to the Diamondbacks. Um, man, I truly don't know. I have no idea what they're going to do with these guys. I mean, they're going to keep them up um, before Erod and Montgomery go up or come back. But, I mean, the most I think you can do is put Ryan in the bullpen and maybe send Tommy down and give him spot starts. Like, I truly don't know what the moves are here. I think this is kind of oh, that was nice. <laughs> I think this is just one of those situations that we've had a couple times here where we kind of just have too many guys at one position, and you're kind of just left like, well, now what? Like, what do we do with these guys? Like, these guys have earned their spots, and you got a veteran coming in. So, I mean, I would be pissed off if I was Ryan, but I'm sure maybe they even talked to him about it before. So, I truly don't know what they're gonna do. Um, I'd be really curious, maybe. I can maybe even see maybe a move happening with one of them too. Um, I mean, they showed up pretty well in spring, and if they have a pretty decent start to the season, I can see them trading for like certain relievers or, you know, maybe a little bit more depth as well. Yeah, uh, there was actually a report that came out yesterday that teams are calling the Dimebacks about Jake McCarthy, which – not surprised by because I feel like he's the odd man out. Like he is not gonna get 
consistent at bats with the way Alec has been hitting. Let's right? go, Brandon. You did it. Right? Yeah. yeah. The way he has been hitting this spring, he's forcing Tori to play him every day. Oh, dude, especially yeah. after that. Game. Is, mm. the, yeah, dude. He has been like the work he did this offseason improving his batting because he knew that was his one liability. And that's his one thing. Because we know how good of a defensive center fielder he is. Like he is phenomenal. So if he can if he can hit 240, 250, he's gonna play almost every day. We know Corbin's playing every day. And Guriel most likely will also play every Yeah, you're not and you're not gonna have, much. like you're not gonna sit those three. Like you might do it like once every like couple of weeks or maybe once a month, but that's not that doesn't allow Jake to be successful. Like that's how a lot of these part-time players do, like they get the opportunity and they just don't do well because they need consistent at bats. That's why they send them down. I think that's why Jordan Lawler is not on the opening day roster. Is they know he needs consistent at bats. He'll get that in Reno, um, and I think Blaze forced their hand on that too. Blaze has been absolutely spent. Yeah, Blaze has been blazing it. Like, there is no tiptoeing around. Like, Blaze has been, wow. Um, he he uh, did an yeah. absolute... He deserve a spot to, like, fight. Like, he should start every day against left-handed pitchers. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's been just... Like, he hit an absolute bomb at Chase Field today that no one got to saw because it wasn't broadcast on TV. Um, but I think he he is the utility... Um, infielder, like he's gonna be the backup. Um, and I was surprised they sent down Paven. Like that one, I was like, "Oh damn!" Um, I just Christian's gonna play every day, so we don't really need a backup first baseman. And Suarez can play first base. So if they ever need to do that, and then they put maybe they feel better with Domo at third, and they put Blaze at short for those games, like. Um, you're and then not we, taking Erod out of the. I'm sorry, you're not taking uh, not Erod. You're not taking Eugenio out of the lineup for Domo. Like I love. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is Walker's out. Yes, oh, when they oh, sit oh, Walker, okay, okay. put Suarez at first, put Domo to third, and Blaze at short, or whoever has the better arm at third, whether that's Domo or Blaze. But I think Blaze has mainly been playing shortstop and second base during spring. So I and think Domo has played third last year. And here's a quick. If this was MLB The Show, and if I could be in a perfect world, I'm cooking up what Josh just said. Tommy Henry and or Ryan Nelson, one of the two. Jake McCarthy, Ivan Melendez, maybe some other minor league lower prospect. To the Guardians, Emmanuel Classe. I'm doing that. Force trades off. MLB The Show instantly proving the bullpen. You get a closer until Seawall gets back, and even when he gets back, you have... An elite, extra elite arm. Can you imagine seventh inning is Ginkle, eighth inning is Seawall, ninth inning is you just gotta get a lead going into seventh and it's over. That's what I'm saying. Again, like if teams were inquiring about Jake, and like this again, this is probably not gonna happen. If I was in an MLB the show and I had force trades on and I tried to make it somewhat realistic, I'm cooking that up right now. I might go try that <laughs> in a franchise mode and see what happens. Um, yeah, no, um, but no, um, we're just, we're literally just, we're under 48 hours away from first pitch. Uh, Zach Callen will be starting opening day. All three of us will be at the game. Um, so very excited about that. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Um, I love opening day. I think it should be a national holiday, uh, personally. Yeah. Um, so um, but no, let's just kind of wrap the show up here with a just a quick preview there of um, opening day. Obviously, we know Gallon is starting, um, so most likely Gallon on the bump, uh, Gabby behind the plate, Walker, Marte, Domo, Suarez, Guriel, Alec, and Corbin in the outfield, and then DH most likely is Jock. Um, I'm curious if they're just going to have Jock do DH full time or if they're still going to do the platoon thing. Like, I know Freeland's starting on opening day, 
but it's it's opening day. You put out your A lineup. Like you, and the fact that Gritchick, we haven't heard anything. I doubt he's gonna be ready. I say you start at least start jock opening day. Um after that, maybe do matchup based. Um I'm curious to see how Gallon does. Because Gallon had a couple of starts in the spring where he struggled, and then he had a couple of just premier Gallon. Like, so we're gonna have to wait and see there. Um, but I think they win uh opening day. Um, I could see them winning again. It's the Rockies, they should sweep that entire series. Like they they really should sweep that four game series. Yeah. Like that's what they need to do. Like they need to beat up on the Rockies every single time that they play. But it's the Rockies and we'll probably win six out of ten versus them because just playing in Denver is just a crapshoot, I swear. Like you never know. Like you could have one of those like three two games or you could have a twelve ten game. So um but no, uh, Gabe, any uh, predictions or previews for opening day? Um, should be fun. I'm hoping like there's a lot more energy than there has been these past couple of years because they have not been sellouts since 2019. Like they've been what, around 35,000 there. I'm hoping there's a lot more people, a lot rowdier crowd. I'm excited to see the new lights. Hopefully, people hit home runs so we can see the new lights in action. Um, I believe the stadium should probably be open too so the ball is going to be flying a little bit more um also i just kind of want to bring up real quick uh i have a state of the union at some point at the end of this month um so i'll be talking about uh the d-back signings what they're doing like the first weekend the Otani going into jail thing a lot to talk about homie (laughs) yeah boris disaster class and then i guess Bauer paying a Japanese team to let him pitch or something like that. So, yeah, look out for that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's uh, yeah. You definitely have some things to uh, talk about, um, Brett. Any uh, predictions or pre- or preview in the uh, opening day? So, one of the things like you were talking about with bringing your A lineup. Uh, obviously, you know Kyle Freeland is going to be the Rockies opening day starter. He's a lefty. Jock's a lefty. The one thing I will say, at least, you know, to keep an eye on is Jock again has been in, in this division for so long. And same with Kyle Freeland. He's, he don't have the numbers on me. He's probably seen Kyle Freeland enough to where it's not like going to be unfamiliar with him to where I'm comfortable with Jock starting with him. And even like Alec, like my prediction, Alec, first home run of the Diamondback season. Oh, I like it. And he wins player of the game opening day. Interesting. That is a definitely a bull take. I will give you that. Um, speaking of bull takes, um, we did have an article drop uh, today that I wrote. Um, so make sure to go ahead and check that out on um, ASAP Sports Network. Um, it is also linked in the uh, description of the video. Um, I just added it, so you may just have to refresh. So if you're watching on the uh, replay, go ahead and check it out. It is also um posted to our twitter so make sure to go ahead and check that out um do plan on trying to write a little bit more here uh, i definitely had the creative juices flowing when i wrote this um i just started writing and i'm like oh wow this thing got pretty long pretty quickly um i spent more time formatting the actual article than i did actually writing the content in the article um <laughs> to be honest so um uh, yeah oh, so that's a very good question you probably it's probably happy now um, that we finally got someone good because, yeah, this division, and I've said it before, um, D-backs, Giants, and Padres, I could see them all being, again, this was before today, I thought they could be within three games of each other. Like, I was like, Diamondbacks was like 87, 88 wins. I could see Giants at like 85 and like Padres at like 84. Um. Because until the Dodgers give me a reason, the Dodgers rule the NL West. They always do. Like, they have dominated this division for, like, 15 years. Like, they they win it every year because they have some of the best people in the front office at their jobs. They have a great GM. They have a great support staff that just gets it done. So, 
Uh, it'd be great if the. Uh, I think if there's one team that can do it, it's us. I think the Diamondbacks are the only one that could do it. I don't think the Giant. Like I think the Giants took a step in the right direction this offseason. Padres took a, I think, a little bit of a step back. Um, I think the expectations for the Padres will be a lot lower. So them winning the same number of games that they did last year, like 82, 83, could be seen as a improvement. Um, so, yeah, we'll just have to uh, wait and see there. Um, but I'm very excited for the season to start. Um, I love baseball season. It gives me a daily uh, routine. Um, like I, I'm like, oh, I get to watch a baseball game today, unless there's an off day, which I hate that. Like, I get those, they. Those are so sad. So I get they need the All Star break for the players, but dear lord, do I get bored for those like four days? My brain <laughs> I'm like, what am I supposed to do? Has baseball made us ADHD riddled? For every day, I'm like, I need my baseball content. Which so. you can look for us because guess what? You're going to be ADHD riddled after you follow us because this year we're going full steam. Yeah, yeah. We definitely plan on – you're going to see a lot of us here. Um, so for right now, um, I th- I'm i not sure what our schedule is going to – our show schedule is going to look this week. So definitely make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Hit that bell so that you do get notified whenever we upload a new video or we go live. Uh, make sure to also check out our Twitter as that's where we post all of our content. And some of you may even be watching this on our Twitter. I will not say X. It is Twitter. It will always be Twitter. Um, it is live streaming here on our Twitter. Um, so make sure to go ahead and give us a follow uh, over there as well. Um, so you don't miss any of our content. I do want to say thank you to everyone that has followed us on Twitter. We did officially surpass 400 followers on Twitter. I feel that's pretty impressive without having the season even started. And once we reach 500, we will be doing a little giveaway of some so, uh, D-back sign items. So be on the lookout yeah, for that. So, yeah, definitely. You're going to want to be a part of that. It's going to be so fun. Um Gabe, you weren't here for our last episode, so just any bold, bold predictions for the season. I think you kind of had one. Like you said, D backs like near 100 wins, which is pretty bold. Yeah, I didn't even think that was bold. I, I thought it was just spitting facts. I thought it was because yeah. we haven't had 100 in a long, Gabe, long Gabe, time. We, we do have a, you know, partial Padres fan here, so he's got to keep us somewhat yeah. biased, you know, his other team. But I will agree with you. D-backs, 100 wins, baby. 101's franchise record. Let's fucking go. Yeah, I have him at 102 at this point with Montgomery. So, I mean, I had him at 84 last year, too. And That's if everything right goes there. right. I yeah, yeah. Like Vegas has them at 83 and a half. I feel no. like anybody that put an 83 and a half over bet before today probably just made money. I'm going to guarantee you it right now. Like, you get you like, should, your bet. I'm going to check bet after this and see if it's still at 83 and a half. There's yeah. no way it's gotta it's gotta move it, down. Yeah, it probably went up like to 86 and a half. Like it it the probably didn't move a lot. I could see so. I could see a minimum if they stumble like 87 wins. Yeah. Um, but you're they're gonna show all the doubters wrong. This was not a one year thing. Yes, they did limp into the playoffs, but once the playoffs started, they were one of the best teams. That's why they made and it to the World Series. From that team that limped into the playoffs. Yes. Um, so I think we're going to see how how good of a manager Tory is when he has a lot of play, toys to play with. Like, this is what pause, you want to see. Pause, pause, pause. Sorry. <laughs> so uh, we do appreciate everyone for uh, tuning in to our emergency podcast today. Uh, make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Make sure to like the video, comment. Uh, make sure to give us a follow on Twitter. Um, as always, we do appreciate everyone for joining this ride with us. Let's have a great 2024 season.